بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم Cast of dead As you have seen in the previous video So we have shown different source of fun So the first one that we want to discuss is Cast of dead Cost of debt comprise of debentures and long term loans, right? So here we have to find out the cost of debts. Cost of debt includes cost of debentures, cost of bonds, and several costs of cost of several long term loans. If the business takes loan from the market, so the loan providers of course provide some sort of sort of interest. That interest is called a cost from the business perspective, as we have discussed in the previous video. So I'm not going to discuss in details. So each source of fund has a cost for that one, so we have to pay a cost for this one as well. Since interest is a tax deductible expenses, we have to consider the after tax cost of debt. Interest is a tax deductible expenses, right? Why it is called tax deductible expenses? Because first of all, we have to charge the interest on the income statements, and then on the residual value, we have to pay tax for the government. So that is why this is called tax deductible expenses. Types of debts. In this case, we have divided into two parts. It can be irredeemable debt as well as it can be redeemable debt. First of all, the cost of irredeemable debt. What is irredeemable debt? Irredeemable debt means the company issued this, the bond in the market or the company issued the venture in the market, but the company do not promise to repurchase it back, right? So the company do not promise to repurchase it back after a particular number of years, for example, five years or 10 years. It does not mention the time period that this loan is taken for how many years. Suppose another example, company take loan from the bank, for example. It does not mention this loan is for how many years, for five years, for 10 years, for how many years. So life is unlimited. So when life is unlimited, so this can be called as irredeemable. Irredeemable simply means, uh, we can say unreturnable. So we cannot return it back, right, to the company. But of course, don't be worried if you purchase the source of fund or if you purchase, for example, bonds, which is irredeemable, it doesn't mean that you cannot sell it in the market. You can sell in the market to anyone, to Ahmad, to Mahmoud, and so on. But you cannot sell it back to the company for a specific, for unlimited number of years. So there is no guarantee from the company side to repurchase it back. So that is why we can say irredeemable means the life is not fixed, right? So you cannot redeem it back to the company. Redeemable means you can return it back. Irredeemable means you cannot return it back. But of course, in the case of redeemable, life is fixed. After 10 years, you can resell it back to the company. After, for example, 15 years, you can return it back to the company. But in the case of irredeemable, you cannot return it back to the company into unlimited number of years. But in both of the cases, Anytime if you want to sell in the market, you can sell to Ahmad, to Mahmoud, to Rahim, to anyone. But you cannot sell to the company under redeemable, but under irredeemable. But you can sell to the company under redeemable, but after a particular number of years, right? So first of all, cost of irredeemable. Whether it is irredeemable or whether it is redeemable, cost of this one is calculated under two conditions. Condition number one, before tax cost of debt, and condition number two, after tax cost of debt. If it is before tax cost of debt, what is the formula? KD, cost of debt, is equal to I divided by NP multiplied to 100. What is I? I means interest. What is NP? Means principal or net proceed of the debts. NP means the amount of money that you have raised from the loan. For example, you have taken one lakh loan from the market, from the bank. NP is one lakh. For example, you have issued, for example, 100 securities in the market. How many security you have issued? 100 security. Let us say, for example, the price of each security is equal to 1,000, right? If you multiply to this one, so it means you have raised equal to how much? 1 lakh from the market. In this case, in P is equal to 1 lakh. Or you have, for example, sold 100 security in the market, but you paid, for example, 10 percentage discount. Then out of 1 lakh, 10 percentage if you minus 10 percentage, you get equal to how much? 90,000. So in P is equal to 90,000. Or other condition, for example, the price of each share or each security was, for example, 1,000, but you sold it at 10 percentage premium. At how many percentage premium? 10 percentage premium. On that case, on that case, this will be equal to 1,10,000, right? So that is why it is called, in this case, 
In this case, if you receive one lakh ten thousand, so one lakh ten thousand can be called as what as NP. So NP is the amount of money that you have raised by selling of the securities. Whether you receive more, you receive less, you receive whatever, so that one can be called as what as NP, right? And the second formula is after tax cost of debt. After tax cost of debt, if this is so, so I into, I will be multiplied into one minus T. What is T? T is the tax which is applicable to the company itself. Whatever rate of tax is applicable to the company, you have to mention here itself, right? So one minus T divided by NP multiplied to hundred, right? So this is called cost of irredeemable. But remember one thing that, as it is mentioned here, we have to consider the after tax cost of debt so before tax cost of debt is ap not applicable. It is just in the stage of theory, applicable in the theory itself, not in the, in the practice. In the real case or in the practice or in the actual case, we have to apply after tax cost of debt. All the formula is given, but we have to apply this one, right? So we should not apply this one. That is totally wrong, right? Remember one more point regarding the NP. If we want to calculate NP or net proceed, so we have to consider this point. In the case of debt, in the case the debt is raised at premium or discount, NP is the net proceed received from the issue, not the face value of the security, right? It means that, as I mentioned before, let us say, for example, we want to sell, for example, 100 shares at the price of, for example, actual prices, uh, we can say 1,000. So this 1,000 basically can be called as face value, can be called as well as face value, right? This is face value. What is face value? Face value means the, the rate which you have mentioned in the documentation of the company. At the time of registration of the company, you have mentioned that how much should be the bond or how much should be the share price of the company. That is called face value. Let us say, for example, you want to sell 100 share at the price of 1,000. If you sell at the price of 1,000, that is called par value. Let me summarize here. So. Let, me, let me explain one more thing, right? Let us say like this. You want to share, issue share in the market. If you want to issue share in the market, you can issue in three conditions. You can issue, for example, at par. You can issue, for example, not only share, it can be in the case of any security. You can issue at par, you can issue at discount. Also, you can issue at premium. At premium. Let us say, for example, you have decided to issue a share for uh, issue share in the market and the value of each share for example is should be equal to thousand should be equal to how much thousand you have decided to sell each share for thousand this is your decision when you go in the market when you go in the market if you sell it for thousand itself this one can be called as par par means simply equal equal to whatever you have decided if you sell for less than that one, for example, you sell, for example, for 900. So this can be called as discount. Why? Because it is less than that one. If you sold, for example, for more than that one, for example, 1100. So this one can be called as what? As premium, right? So the same thing is in the case of, in the case of NP. In this case, if you want to calculate NP, NP should be considered based on par, based on, of course, discount, or based on what? Based on, based on premium. It means if, in, if it is given in the question that the shares are sold at premium, so you have to take premium. If mentioned shares are sold at discount, you have to take a discount. If mentioned shares are sold at premium, then you have to take premium, right? Never you have to take what? Never you have to take the face value. This is called what? Face value. Never take face value. Always. If there is, of course, premium, you have to take premium. If there is a discount, discount. If there is part, take part. And one thing more you have to remember, when there is a flotation cost, first we have to calculate the discount and premium, and then we have to calculate for what? For flotation. Let us say, for example, in this company, we have a flotation cost as well. So if you have flotation cost, first of all, you have to calculate the power, premium, and discount, and then minus the amount for, for what? For flotation. So whatever is the flotation, flotation should be adjusted after discount and premium itself. So please uh, watch the next videos in order to see how to calculate the cost of irredeemable.